Hey guys, by Austin Ramos, and uh, yeah, this Friday the Miami Dolphins defeated the New York Jets 34 to 13. Uh, if you can't tell, different setup right now. Uh, for some reason, my uh, my setup in my room where my uh, where I do most of my Dolphin videos at is not working. Uh, well, I wouldn't say it's not working. It worked, and I had the video done right after the game, and it would stop uploading at 23%. I have no idea why that may be the case, but it's a bit unfortunate and a little bit upsetting, but I think at the end of the day, you work with what you got. And I've tried countless times trying to upload this video and it would constantly get stuck at 23% uploading. But that's not what you guys came here to see. You guys came here to see uh, what the Dolphins did to win the game and how they, you know, post game review stuff. Uh, but really quick, let's get into the highlight. So we have, uh, it's gonna be a shorter one than normal. But bear with me, uh, just trying to make this video on the fly here. We got Tyreek Hill in the flat, and he's just a little bit too fast for Jordan Whitehead. Um, and then right here, pick six by Eccles, and uh, bad throw by Tua. He pump faked, and then ended up and throwing uh, like a soft ball to uh, Braxton Berrios. It wasn't uh, the best uh, play idea. But Tua threw another pick, and then the Jets had one more chance before halftime. And Tim Boyle thought it was a great idea to heave one up in the end zone. But guess who comes out with it? Javon Holland. And man, this guy, such a stud player. He can make anything happen once the ball's in his hands. And he's putting everyone on skates, including the Jets quarterback, Tim Boyle. Uh, not the best day for the Jets, um, but given the circumstances and uh, given how this Dolphins defense is starting to turn things up a bit more and, and ratchet things up and and play better defense and so on and so forth. Uh, it wasn't the best spot for them. Uh, but anyways, we got Chris here on a post game review. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some of the stats for uh, both teams in terms of uh, how the game went. Uh, the Dolphins had 22 first downs to the New York Jets 12. Uh, let's see what else. Red zone efficiency was uh, Dolphins made the uh, red zone twice and uh, was able to be successful twice. Uh, made the end zone three times, was successful th uh, twice. The Jets were in the red zone twice and was successful once. Uh, there were three turnovers by the Dolphins and then three turnovers by the Jets. There were six penalties for both teams, uh, but the Dolphins had 38 total yards from penalties and the Jets had uh, 60 total yards from penalties. Uh, time of possession was 35 minutes and 41 seconds for the Miami Dolphins and 24 minutes and 19 seconds for the New York Jets. Uh, I'm not gonna go too crazy with the stats like I do. I pretty much run through all the stats in most post game videos. Uh, I'm just gonna highlight a couple here, um, but it will be a brief overview of all the major stats here, right? So uh, obviously we got to start off with the quarterbacks. We got Tua going 21 to 30 for 243 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, uh, sacked twice for a loss of 15 total yards. Tim Boyle on the other hand went 27 of 38, 179 total yards. Uh, one touchdown, two interceptions, sacked seven times for a loss of 49 uh, total yards. And then rushing, the Dolphins had a pretty good game on the ground. And I'll allude more to that when it comes to um, the, how I thought the Dolphins could win this game, uh, their keys to victory. But the Dolphins went 167 yards on the ground total. Uh, we had Raheem Mostert le uh, leading the way with 20 carries, 94 total yards, two touchdowns, longest of 34. And both of those touchdowns were really nice by Raheem Mostert. Uh, and then Jeff Wilson, 11 carries, 56 total yards. Uh, aside from that, uh, we had Darrington Evans with two carries for 16. Uh, first game with the Finns, not so bad for him. Uh, Brees Hall led the way for the Jets with seven carries, 25 yards. That's crazy. Overall, the team had 29 total yards uh, rushing. Not the best day for them in the office. But uh, then we have the Miami Dolphins receiving with 243 total, uh, but it was really headlined by the top two guys on the team, Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill, both eclipsing 100 yards in this game. Waddle had a really good game, eight receptions, 114 yards, uh, longest of 32 off of eight targets. And then Tyreek Hill, nine receptions, 102 yards, one touchdown, longest of 35 off of 12 targets. Uh, one of those was one of the picks uh, the, right before half. Um, so tough one there. For the New York Jets, they had 179 total receiving yards, and it was headlined by Garrett Wilson. Seven receptions, 44 total yards, one touchdown, longest of 11 off of 10 targets. 
Tyler Conklin rolls right behind him with four receptions, 33 total yards. Uh, and then Brees Hall, seven receptions, 24 yards. Jason Brownlee, two receptions, 20 yards. Uh, everyone else had under 20, but it was very close. It was like 19, 18, 15, and six for the New York Jets. Uh, fumbles, Miami Dolphins had uh, two fumbles, one of them. Uh, so two have fumbled a handoff to Evans uh, late in the game, and it was recovered by Ashton Davis. And then for uh, Braxton Barrios, he fumbled, but instantly recovered on a punt return. And then for the New York Jets, Tim Boyle had two fumbles. One was recovered by Brees Hall, and the other was recovered by uh, Xavier Newman. And then uh, brief defensive stats, but John Baker, six total tackles, six solo, uh, one tackle for a loss, two pass deflections. He was the Dolphins' leading tackler. And we have Javon Holland, five total, five solo, uh, one pass deflection, and obviously the pick six. Um, yeah, Javon Holland had a, a little concussion scare late in the game. Uh, a lot of people were like, why is he in the game? Blah, 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 blah. Kind of have to agree, but at the same time, you want your best players out there on the field at all times. But given uh, what happened to Jalen Phillips in this game, it's not the best thing to, uh, to talk about. But uh, yeah, he ruptured his Achilles, and it's not a, not a good thing to see. Uh, another MetLife victim down the drain. Uh, but speaking of Jalen Phillips, he had one sack, three tackles for a loss, one pass deflection, and two QB hits. He was having a really good defensive game. Uh, Jason Long Jr. won one uh, QB hit. Uh, Christian Wilkins, two sacks, two tackles for a loss, uh, two QB hits. Deshaun Hand, one tackle for a loss, one sack, one QB hit. Uh, Emmanuel Ogba, one and a half sacks, uh, two QB hits. Zach Sealer, one, one sack, one tackle for a loss, one QB hit. Uh, Bradley Chubb, two QB hits. Uh, Raekwon Davis, half a sack and a QB hit. And then uh, Deshaun ha uh, Elliott, one what is a pass deflection? Uh, same thing for Xavier Howard. And then defensively for the New York Jets, uh, their, their defense was on the field a lot. So you, this explains why CJ Mosley was the leading tackler with 14 total, nine solo, one tackle for a loss, one pass deflection. Uh, DJ Reed, 10 total, eight solo, uh, one pass deflection. Uh, Sauce Gardner, one pass deflection. Who else we got here? Ashton Davis, one pass deflection. Salmon Thomas, half a sack, one QB hit. Uh, Brandon Eccles, one pass deflection, uh, and then a defensive touchdown. Michael Clemens, half a sack, one QB hit. Uh, Bryce Huff, one sack, one tackle for a loss, one QB hit. That's pretty much the defensive stats for the New York Jets, except for now we got some interceptions to talk about. Javon Holland, one interception, returned for 99 total yards and a touchdown. And then Joan Baker had a interception that was returned for one yard. It was off of the x Howard pass deflection. And then we also have uh, Brandon Eccles for the New York Jets. One interception, return for 30 yards and a pick six. And then we also have DJ Reed's uh, interception return for no yardage. Uh, I'm not going to highlight any of the punt returns, kick returns, or the punting. Uh, but let's highlight some kicking. Chasing Sanders, two field goals, uh, two for two on field goals, uh, longest of 54, four for four on extra points. And then Greg Zerline, uh only had two extra point attempts and he missed one of them. So one for two on extra points. And that pretty much wraps up some stats for this Miami Dolphins, New York Jets, Black Friday game. Now, I wanted to talk about what were the Dolphins keys to victory and how they either executed or didn't execute. So it was defensively, it was stop the run, make the quarterback uncomfortable, knocked it out of the park there. Only allowed 29 total rushing yards. Uh, Tim Doyle threw two interceptions, given one of them was uh, a Hail Mary before the half. But still, the fact is he ended up throwing an interception. Uh, Dolphins forced him to throw some turnovers. Um, the one with Jerome Baker was a little bit more of a pop up and, oh, I got the ball, you know, but it was still interesting to see. Um, but yeah, I mean, sacked seven times. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, definitely helped boost <laughs> the Dolphins defensive numbers there. Uh, and then also offensively was run the ball efficiently, get Jalen Waddle involved, and it goes every game, but protect to uh, or, you know, just not allow so many sacks. And I think they did a good job on all three of those. The one thing I feel like they poorly executed was ball security. Ball security has been starting to become a big issue with this Miami Dolphins team, and it's going to come back to bite them in these big time games, okay? Uh, which they're gonna have a couple of those later on in the stretch of the season. So be on the lookout for those uh, But yeah, three turnovers and 
all at the source is Tua, and it's unfortunate. I don't want to point fingers at him, but two of them were interceptions, one of which was a pick six, and then uh, the other one was a, a failed handoff that was a fumble, and it was recovered by the Jets' defense. Uh, it's not a massive issue, but moving forward, this cannot be the precedence. This can't be the issue that the Miami Dolphins are finding themselves having uh, with poor bot security. Uh, the fumble was a big one. Uh, the interceptions, you know, I feel like it happens as a quarterback. You're going to get caught, especially with a defense like the Jets, who apply a lot of pressure and their DBs are well enough to recover on a lot of these routes and uh, end up picking off the ball. Uh, aside from that, I think uh, at the end of the day, if you're throwing two to three touchdowns a game and having one interception, it's not horrible. But in a game like this, you have one touchdown and you throw two interceptions. Now that's a bit concerning. Luckily, the running game was helping him out, and uh, Raheem Mostert ended up getting two touchdowns. Um, but aside from that, pretty good game by the Dolphins. Tough stretch of football coming up, but uh, in terms of the short term, next week against the uh, Washington Commanders, who uh, were sellers at the trade deadline and uh, got rid of two of their best defensive linemen. So I think that eases a little bit more of the concern that uh, Dolphin fans have going into this game. But uh, their offense is no slouch. I think they have a lot of good playmakers on offense. And the biggest thing is you don't want to get in a shootout with them because more often than not, they could probably come out on top in the, within a shootout. So uh, that's the last thing you want to have against this Washington Commanders team. I think you force them into having some turnovers early and often, and that will be very beneficial towards the success of the Miami Dolphins later on in the game. Uh, but that is a little brief preview for that uh, Washington Commanders game. Currently, the Dolphins sit at eight and three on the season um, and currently in first place. Buffalo is playing the Philadelphia Eagles probably by the time this video is uploaded. Uh, and they're currently six and five and they could either end the day being six and six or they can end the day being seven and five and right on the tail of the Miami Dolphins. And then they go into a bye this following week. Uh, Jets fall to third place uh, with a four and seven record. And then the, the New England Patriots are two and eight, currently playing the New York uh, Giants. And uh, I want to say they're losing at this point. Uh, they are losing seven to ten currently. Uh, and there's two minutes left in the fourth, and they have the ball. Mac Jones got benched. Anyways, that's not what you guys want to hear. You guys want to hear stuff about the Dolphins. Uh, that pretty much wraps it up, though. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of doing the video from here. Might do it from time to time. It really just depends on if my setup is giving me issues over there with all the more Dolphins centric stuff. Uh, but yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed it and a big win by the Fins. Uh, thanks for watching. Peace.